Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's why I do like a three. I have backups. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's cool. We do like a three camera shoot. Two camera shoot. Okay, uh, this is called This May Be Something. My name is Lou Tambone, I'm a musician from northern New Jersey. The act uh, is actually just me, Lou Tambone. Here I am again. In times like these you tell me it's gonna be alright. Uh, technically this would be my first official album recorded in, professionally in a studio um, with other musicians and things like that. Um, usually I record my own demos here in my garage. I play the drums, I play the bass, I play the guitars, I do the singing. Once in a while I bring a friend in, but for the most part I do all the work myself. And they're demos, they don't sound that great. So this would be my first real release. So I'm taking from a pool of songs and putting it all together. I was a little bit unsure that people would want to donate. You know, you get a lot of people come to see you. They like the music, but you know, can you can you get four thousand dollars raised? I mean, from just people on Facebook and whatever. I mean, it's a little a little tough. So I had it had it kind of sitting there, saved, and ready to go. And uh, you know, I just couldn't get up the nerve to do it for a while until I, I knew people would be into it. So after a little while, some friends of mine did some. And they were successful, and I said, you know what, I'm going to give this a go. Uh, but it, it seems like it's a pretty good model, you know. Kickstarter is all or nothing, meaning if you don't get funded, you don't hit your target, no one gets charged, and you don't get any money. There are other ones out there, Indiegogo and some other ones that you can still, if you make three quarters of the way, they'll give you money. So I thought all or nothing would be a good driver, you know. Something good. It always ends up being a lot of friends and family that help you out initially. You have to kind of branch out a little past that. So people sharing links and stuff has been sort of helpful. You know, I noticed that there are a few names in the list of backers that I was unfamiliar with, which means there are people I don't know donating, which is great. I, I have a studio picked out, I have a producer ready to go, I have um, a person who does printing who's ready to help me with t-shirts and the thank you cards and all that other stuff for the rewards. Um, I have the songs picked out, I have the musicians ready, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go, it's really just getting funded. And you know, when we hit the peak, you know, the target, it's, it's good to go. I set a date of April. So we got plenty of time. Yeah, um, who knows what's gonna happen in winter? Luckily, the studio is about five minutes from here. Not even. It's in town. So, and I know the, the producer from years ago. So, the stuff that influences me and moves me is stuff from the classic rock era. You know, it's things like you know Beatles, Who Stones. You know, the holy, holy trinity of uh, rock. Um, I'm also a big fan of some of the bands who came a little bit later, maybe in the 80s, 90s, not so much 90s, I guess more 80s, the replacements, Paul Westerberg was a big influence on me. Um, nah, I mean, I'd like to say thanks to, to everybody who comes into this room and, and helps me make music, and everyone who, you know, comes in just to have a good time. We've done a lot of music in this garage, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Thanks to my, my wife and kids who are always upstairs and have to hear it full blast through the house all the time. They're cranking the TVs up to God knows what just to drown the sound out. So 
That's really all I have to say.